Hey YouTube, what is going on? As you guys see, I'm a little uh, out of commission here. Just had shoulder surgery the other day. Um, feeling all right, everything's good, nothing too crazy. Just very limited, I can't do much with my right hand. So uh, today's video, we're gonna talk about tuning. We're just gonna go through the basics of tuning 101 for these diesel trucks, so stay tuned. Uh, this came in the other day. It's my five to seven inch tip. Uh, decided to go polished. If you look at it, it is, uh, it's pretty nice. Nothing crazy, but, uh, these tips are fairly inexpensive. I don't know if you guys been on Amazon and seen them, but they have a rolled edge here. I probably had about four of them. And like I said in my last video, I've constantly just wiped them up, cleaned them and sold them for what I bought them for. And, uh, they work really well. And I mean, it's doesn't have any fancy names on it or whatnot, but it's an exhaust tip. So it is what it is. I think that tip should go fairly well with the tires um, when, or excuse me, the wheels when they get here. Um, just a little update on the wheels. I ordered the wheels October 20th. Um, this Tuesday, I think, what day is that going to be? That will be this Tuesday, January 12th will actually be the 12 week mark. Uh, I was quoted 12 to 15 weeks of backlog of uh, getting the wheels here. They're in polish now. I don't know how long it's going to take to get out of polish and be shipped, but hopefully those should be here by the end of the month. Um, next week, uh, we're, or excuse me, next weekend, Bodie's going to come over. We're going to do hubs on his truck. So stay tuned for that. Uh, and we're also going to do some U joints. So good little informative video. Um, obviously I'm, I'm still going to be messed up in this sling, but I'll be uh videoing it and kind of, you know, being his little tool, tool helper. So he'll be knocking out the work and I'll just be, you know, filming it. All right, guys, as you just seen that last clip, you know, we did a little cold start on the truck. It's literally been sitting for about three or four days. Nothing crazy has happened, but did the auto start. She fired right up, a little poof of smoke, whatnot, you know, and whatnot, but it's a, that's pretty standard for how this, this truck runs. Um, today's video, we're getting into tuning, you know, basics of tuning 101. I see a lot of questions on the form and I see a lot of people asking, and it's just, Tuning is one of those things that's kind of like a forbidden topic that people don't like to talk about anymore. So we'll divulge a little bit into it here. And uh, this is just information I've gathered through my own experience. And I'll let you take what you want. Um, if you do have questions, please comment down below. If you have anything to add, please comment down below. I know I'm not going to be able to cover everything, but I'll cover just the basics. All right. So um, when we're talking about tuning, there's many ways to break it down. There's different types of tuners out there. There's different ways of doing it. There's different hardware, there's different software. Um, first and foremost, we'll start off like I said earlier. The EPA is cracking down and a lot of companies are being shut down. There's a lot of fines being handed out throughout the country um, to different tuning companies. And it's just like a lot of people are scared of the actual, you know, banning of firearms and you know all the politics that comes with that there are some starting to worry about the epa and these deleting emissions on these these trucks so that is a hot topic and uh a lot of these companies are getting fined getting scared and or just shut, shutting up shops so they don't have to deal with those crazy fines from the government so um you're going to see in a lot of forums i'm on facebook a lot and i talk a lot in those forums i usually recommend a um uh, I don't recommend a tune per se. I recommend a person to get in contact. And that person, he owns a business, Michael Garofalo for Garofalo Enterprises, and he will get you taken care of. I'm never going to say anything or promise anything from him because I personally have never met the guy. I just, I've worked with him and ordered many parts for him, and he's just phenomenal with his customer service and getting people taken care of. So um, a lot of this stuff we're going to talk about, I'm just going to refer you to him. I'll put a link into his website uh, in the description so you guys can get down there and check that out as well. All right, so one of the first things people do when they get these trucks is, for the performance side of things, they want to delete. And, it, and what I mean by that is, you know, either disable your EGR, remove your DPF, and put a tune on it. Uh, a lot of companies are out there that are able to help you. You can go on eBay, they're a dime a dozen when it comes to just buying a box, a set of box tunes, a DPF race pipe, and be done with it. Uh, there's also what different ways of going and piecing it together. Um, I'll tell you this, you guys seen a few uh, videos ago, um, Chance came over and we took all his EGR components off. If, you want, if you're trying to save money, you don't even have to do that. The EGR components can stay on once you delete a truck and they're just deactivated. My truck still has the DEF tank installed, 
just it's probably like a third of the way full with DEF and it's probably all crystallized by now, but those are components you don't necessarily need to remove. So um, your diesel particulate filter and all that stuff, yes, you're gonna have to remove that because the tune of the motor um, is gonna change. The exhaust gases are not gonna be going back into the, uh, the engine itself and it's just gonna be soaking up that uh, diesel particulate filter or DPF and it's just gonna constantly go into a regen, if not throw a lot of codes and give you issues. So uh, a DPF, uh, Pipe, race pipe and a basic HS Mini Max or Bully Dog tuner. Though to me, that's kind of like your beginning stages if you just want to do a basic delete. All right, so as you guys have seen in my past videos, I do a, I try to break things down in stages. It's just how I function. It's how I how I kind of like narrow things down. And to me, there's about five different stages when it comes to tuning. Um, I've already already covered your basic delete, right? I don't even consider that a I guess that is a stage one. You can look at your EGR, your DPF, and putting some tunes. You can spend as much as $3,000. You can spend as much as $1,000 to get to that point. It's all depending on the quality of tunes you want to get and actually what kind of exhaust system you want to get. If you just want to get a race pipe or if you want to get a four inch, you know, turbo back exhaust with no muffler, stainless, aluminized, whatever the case may be, you can spend money. Um, for me, I went with my very first tuner was the MM3, right? We had that. Uh, that was just pretty much the, I'm not a computer guy, so I want to say that's the hardware, not the software. The hardware is the MM3 tuner. It was the monitor, the unlock box or the control module that actually lets you break into the computer, the ECM, and tune it. Um, that is uh, what I decided to go with. I was very young with tuning. I didn't know much about it, very naive, and I wanted something very conservative. And for what my tuning company was putting out through the MM3 tuner and what I knew or the research I had done, it made it very simple and cutthroat for me. Um, I wanted to go easy link at first, but I was really nervous about the whole cloud-based stuff because I just didn't know how that worked. Um, cloud-based, you know, there was, you know, people out there like, oh, people could hack into your truck and shut it down and mess things. That's, to me, that's just astronomically stupid. But if they really want to do it, I'm sure they can. There's nothing's impossible these days with uh, that type of technology. But the Easy Link is the company I would highly recommend with going from here forward. So just basic deletes, like I said. Uh, you can do the EGR block off plates, basic tunes, set of box tunes, or even custom tunes from a uh, company or whatever the case may be, and or your exhaust either from the turbo back. Those are definitely going to be options for you. All right, the next kind of stage, I guess you could say, going towards deletes would be um, doing a second gen swap. Not all companies are required for you to do a uh, retune when you do a second gen swap, but to me, it only makes a little bit more sense just to cover your butt to get another tune that is meant for a second gen swap. And why, why I say that is because you're going from a, a, a variable vein turbo to a fixed vein turbo, and things are a little bit different. The sizes are different, so your engine needs to understand how much air it's getting to the air fuel ratio, things like that. So it's not necessary. I know for Bodie's truck, when we did his Evil Fab second gen swap, we didn't have a tune right off the bat. He was using the HS Mini Max, and it worked fine. Um, he didn't get any check engine lights or anything like that, but it's definitely something to talk to your tuner about when you get a second gen swap or hard parts swapped out in general. They can always add things to it. They can always take away things, you know, turn off, say, warning lights, um, other things like that. So those are always good things to think about. All right, next stage I wanted to talk about was uh, these... This, these stages are kind of like different things that your tuning can do to help you out, right? It's not def, it's not a build stage. Um, and this is just me going off a of personal experience. So the next thing I would talk about would be doing like a, a valve body. I know RevMax stand, uh, sells a standalone computer that can actually boost up your valve body pressures to say 225 from the standard 160 to 170 PSI. Once you do that billet valve body channel plate and up your line pressure, they that, that's, a, that's some software they make. They can also do it through... Uh, I believe Alpha OBD, um, I believe you can do it through like a snap-on scan tool, and I obviously you can do it through different tuning platforms. So um, when I had my first tuning uh, platform, the MM3, that's what I went with. I told him, I was like, hey, I got a freaking valve body. He upped the line pressure. Obviously, everything went really well. No issues there. The next thing I'll talk about is fueling upgrades. This is definitely where tuning is important. I'm not saying all those prior ones are not important, but when you're doing fuel upgrades, say injectors, a CP3, whatever the case may be, you definitely need to get your um, engine retuned to suffice for that extra fuel coming in. Um, you don't want to have a crap ton of black smoke. I'm a person that really hates that. I'm, I hate black smoke. I hate rolling coal. To me, I find none of that stuff interesting. Um, some people do. and it, it, 
to each their own. There's no no thing with that. There's no, there's nothing wrong with that. I personally just don't like leaving the cars behind me in a cloud of smoke and leaving that bad taste in people's mouth. Um, it's not, you know, it's just one of those things. It just doesn't put a good rep and hints back to the very beginning when we were talking about the EPA cracking down on stuff. So um, I have completely clean tunes on my truck now. Whatever I drive, whenever I drive, whether I get on it, whether I'm just idling, whether I have a little bit of lag that um, I would expect smoke, I don't have smoke anymore. So that's freaking awesome. And I really do enjoy not having a black tail behind me of just smoke everywhere. So um, like I said, let's go back to, let's kind of come back to where we're talking about. Sorry, I got off a little tangent there. Talking about fuel, whenever you do fuel mods, you're definitely gonna have to do tuning. Um, Cam over there at Everything Diesel, he, he just recently did a dual fueler kit and then he added those uh, flux diesel uh, those flux diesel injectors. So when you add stuff like that, you definitely need to adjust for it when it comes to your, uh, your uh, tuning. All right, and the last thing I wanna talk about when it comes to tuning is when you start getting into these race applications, um, whether you're sporting a big turbo, you're at the racetrack, kinda of like Turbo Tom or uh, Greg A, those are, to me, that's just a completely different ball game of things to even look at and talk about. And it's nothing I have experience with. So uh, I'll leave that to those guys to talk about that and, and the tuners themselves and dealing with that. Um, there's nothing wrong with being a tuner these days. It's just keeping it compliant with the uh, EPA. And that is the problem we're having uh, in today's world with people just, I guess, taking advantage of a good thing. You know what I mean? To, in more or less words. So uh, think about that when you guys are out there driving. Hopefully you guys aren't causing a ruckus and pissing people off and, you know, giving the diesel community a bad name. And if you are, man, just reevaluate things. Just think, you know, you're taking away the fun for the rest of the diesel community. And hopefully uh, maybe you can, you know, fix your actions and we can keep moving forward and hopefully we can have this in the future. All right, one thing I do want to talk about is the different platforms, right? So I've already mentioned like h &S, uh, the Minimax, the Bully Dog. Um, I had an MM3. And the two big things that people like using now are EFI Live and the Easy Link uh, hardware, I guess you could say. I might be wrong, hardware, software. You guys understand, the platform. Um, MM3 to me is a, it's a good system. It's uh, great for like monitoring things, but to me it's really outdated. Uh, not in a lot of people use it anymore. There's one tuner that I know of that still uses it on a normal everyday basis. That goes along with the Race Me Ultra too. That's kind of like the same thing. Um, but there's not very many people that use it. The, the company I switched with and I'm with now used to use it, but they don't use it anymore. So they use the EasyLink system. Um, and I'm just, I'd rather use EasyLink. It's, it's nice that it's a cloud-based software that you can just pull tunes from and try different things and all that. And it just, it makes the, makes running different tunes a lot more, I guess, easier and accessible. h and uh, your h and Minimax and your Bully Dog are kind of like the things that first started with these fortunes. Those are like the first computers or the first uh, systems that were able to actually get inside of the, uh, the fortunes and start, you know, being able to tune those things and delete the emissions and stuff like that. And they, they're kind of like the trendsetters. Uh, obviously, things have advanced. Technology has uh, grown and people are using different platforms. Um, EFI is still a really good uh a really good system people are using. I know people use it for the third gens because they can't use the easy link on the fourth or on the third gens. And people are using EFI Live and AutoCals and things like that. And a lot of people that have race applications are using that that system. Uh, some people are saying it's becoming obsolete and it's becoming older. I don't know. I've heard that a few times, but I'm not 100% sure why they're saying that. But those are something to maybe look at or consider when you're picking out your tuning platform. So, um, but yeah, and like I said earlier, just going back to the Easy Link, that's like the newest, greatest thing that everybody's going to. Uh, everybody's switching to a box tunes, um, not box tunes, but just basic tunes from Easy Link, and it's able to update and quickly just uh, put, install on your truck. So those are something that, that's definitely something to look into. All right, and the last thing I'll talk about when it comes to tuning is, you know, just making sure you understand what you want like there's no reason to have five or six you know tunes uh the switch on the fly tunes and doing all that stuff if you just really want a toe tune uh there's companies that make just a toe tune you can get the easy link the toe tune and you can get the race pipe for the dpf and be out the door fairly inexpensive compared to what it costs for other uh platforms like your l5ps those things are like five or six grand to to just get the emission stuff off and tune and you know delete or whatever the case may be so um it's fairly inexpensive just to get to the basics of deleting 
if you want to go that route. Um, but if you know, there's also you can spend upwards of you know three grand if you want as well. So just do your research. If you have any questions, I highly recommend just giving old Mikey Groffalo a, a, a call over there at his uh, shop. I'll put his number below here, and then also put his link in the description so you guys can also go over to his website and play around and see what he has. A lot of things are out of stock at the moment, um, just with production and. I would say, you know, the whole Corona just messing everything up. So those definitely something. Go check out his website. He's got a lot of good stuff over there. All right, guys, that's going to wrap up today's video. I just wanted to do a little uh, kind of like info, give, give you a little bit of information about the tuning and how things are going uh, with that industry and my thoughts on it. So definitely check out that website Mikey Garofalo has and uh, see what kind of tuning you guys may be interested in. Um, I haven't, you know, told you guys what kind of tuning I have. I'm just going to kind of keep that on the DL for now, just because of how way things are going. Um, but the tunes I have now are a night and day difference compared to what I had. And uh, yeah, I'm happy with them. All right, and uh, like I said, the wheels will be here probably within the next couple of weeks. We got everything we need. There's the wheels, or excuse me, there's the tires. Um, we have our new TPMS sensors. We have our little $5 spiked uh, valve stem covers. Those are there. And then we do have new spike lug nuts, so those will be here uh, before too long. If this is your first time here, please uh, think about getting down there, liking the video, comment, and definitely hit that subscribe button and turn on the notification bell so you guys will have information when I upload uh, my newest and greatest content. So once again, I appreciate each and every single one of you guys watching. And until then, we'll see you guys on the next upload. Have a good one.